Thank you, Steve. Um, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and also good, still good morning, I think, in, uh, in the Baltic. Um, and good evening, those in uh, Asia. I'll be sharing my presentation shortly. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Transport Events for organizing this uh, webinar. And of course, uh, acknowledge the sponsors, Port of Gdansk, and uh, thank you for giving us the privilege to share our presentation, or at least the profile of Yieldport. Um, do you get to see my screen yet? In presentation uh, mode? Yes, it is. We're all good. Right, thank you very much. Okay, first and foremost, uh, I'll start with game, uh, Yieldport. We basically, we pride ourselves of being a game changer in the port uh, operations and management. Um, for those of you who don't know much about us, uh, I'll just have one slide on the company and where we are. As uh, Steve mentioned, we are uh, the only Turkish port listed in the uh, global chain operation world. We are number 12 and we've held that position for the last two years with ambitions of going up to become the top 10 by 2025. Our portfolio obviously started in Turkey, uh, where we currently have uh, five seaports, basically Gem Gemlik uh, uh, in Gemport, basically Gebze, and we have uh, we're basically multi-purpose operators uh, with terminals, as I said, in the, the Izmit Bay area in Bursa, and we have inland terminals as well up in, uh, in Turkey. We also have a presence basically in uh, the Nordic, which is why I'm probably in, on this panel here. We have in Sweden and in Norway. We are present also in Iberia uh, with seven ports in Portugal and two ports in Spain, uh, all on the Atlantic coast. Uh, we also have a presence in, uh, we just started up in uh, 2020 last year in Toronto, where we took over the terminal out there. Uh, and we also, uh, we see Malta there, we have a JV with uh, Terminal Link, uh, where we own 50% of Malta. Um, we have a presence in South America, in Ecuador, Peru, and as well in Guatemala. So again, as I said, we're in 10 countries, 22 ports, six uh, dry terminals, and 5,000 employees. We still have ambitions to grow. We are currently uh, working on uh, finalizing uh, MOU or progressing towards a concession up in Gulfport, Mississippi. Um, and um, for, for those of you who would like to know, we are actually also, through our parent company, Yieldrum Holdings, uh, we have 24%, um, Mr. Yildrum has 24% in CME CGM, which is our wire participation in, in the Malta as well. Right, but enough about the group, um, just to share in briefly, and I said the presentation will be available for everyone. So uh, any more further questions on the specific ports, please reach out to, to myself. Moving along now, of course, uh, main port of course is Yabla in uh, Sweden. Uh, and I think uh, Dominic mentioned us earlier on where we have some connection. I think uh, we're aware of who we are. We have some feeders providing connectivity uh, for the OA and 2M into Gdansk. And uh, Yabla obviously is in a large catchment area. And I think uh, the next speaker, I think uh, Magnus will be talking about his port, which is slightly further south. And uh, hopefully we won't trip up too much on each other. But anyway, so we're looking at the same sort of catchment area. Of course, we have our own uh, just around Yavla and uh, primarily 22,000 tons of sawn timber, paper, and pulp. And uh, so I have a video I like to try to play, which gives you a bit of flavor on Yavla. I just hope it works. Uh, typically, sometimes in these sort of technological worlds and webinars, they falter and then I'll be embarrassed enough to talk a bit more. Something's happening. Is it what you guys are seeing? A video start? The largest still... container terminal on the east coast of Sweden is doubling its capacity. We're getting Welcome volume, but no here. picture, or at least not from my side. Port of all the for large parts of exports and imports. Each year, we handle five million tons of steel, paper, wood, jet fuel, and you see much now? more in our yep. eight terminals. You got it. Containers handle Maybe I'll start from the beginning. 
its capacity. Welcome to Port of Yavle and Deep Port Yavle. Port of Yavle is an active hub for large parts of Sweden's exports and imports. Each year, we handle 5 million tons of steel, paper, wood, jet fuel, and much more in our eight terminals. Container volumen of handeln ökar kraftigt både på export- och importsidan. Det senaste decenniet har Gävle Hamn år för år tagit marknadsandelar och utvecklingen accelererar. Nu växlar vi upp, vi möter upp kundernas ökade behov, vi bygger en helt ny containerhamn med en kapacitet för mer än en halv miljon TU. Dessutom skapar vi ytterligare förutsättningar för etablering av lager och företag direkt i anslutning till hamnen. The new container terminal will open in 2019. There will be larger cranes, deeper and longer keys. In addition, we are building a lab where imported food products are checked according to EC regulation. Mealport is extremely excited to be investing with the Port of Yevla in new container terminal capacity. We see this region as extremely unique with over 15 million tons of cargo uh, in a 200 kilometer radius, which is huge potential. This growth and this capacity that we're building will really drive the region forward and we're proud to be a part of it. Modern logistics cannot be built on a load flow in one direction only. There must be a balance. To solve this, Gilport has invested in a combi terminal in Stockholm, which provides the opportunity to supply the Stockholm region with import volumes through Port of Gävle. Gilport also continually runs container trains from Gävle to Stockholm every week. The largest container shipping companies have daily traffic to and from Port of Gävle, thanks to the high level of service and infrastructure. A new electrified rail connection to the port will be ready in 2021, and several roads and railways connect Port of Gävle with Stockholm and the rest of Sweden. If you need warehouses close to the quay, we have space available in the logistics park. Våra medlemmar i Gävleborg och Dalarnas län representerar en stor del av Sveriges export. Och att Gävlehamn och Ylport nu fördubblar containerkapaciteten är en tydlig signal på att man satsar på vårt näringsliv. Choose Port of Gävle for sustainable transport. The world is always close by from Port of Gävle. Okay, so I'll come back to my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Um, the other ports that we talk about, as we, I think we, you highlight the vid we highlight in the video, we're spending a bit of money on the development of the container in Yavla. Uh, I know in the video it said 2019, so it's now going to be 2021. In fact, the uh, RMGs, the RTGs, have just, the, the automated RTGs have just arrived. Uh, we offloaded the first batch, which just offloaded uh, earlier this week, and the SDSs are expected in the second half of the year. So this is basically primarily what terminal looks like uh, from the top. And as I said, we, 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 why the link to you, uh, to Gdansk and this uh, rail uh, new corridor? Basically, as I said, uh, Dominic mentioned, we already have running feeders into these ports. So CFS paper is a facility that we have within the terminal, fully automated, which I'll go into my next slide. Uh, so we're moving from a widespread to an SDS operation with automated RTGs. Uh, we have CFS steel and CFS timber. So capacity of the terminal will be added up to 350,000 uh, existing capacity is 250,000 TUs. We should work with 350,000 and we should be fully operational in 2021. Um, so we are generally a, a short sea terminal. Uh, we also have, like I said, feeder connectivity to the dams. CFS paper, fully automated, uh, 100,000 TU volume, uh, CFS paper warehouse with rail siding adjacent to it, uh, fully automated warehouse um, and exports to Europe, Turkey, and uh, multiple destinations. Basically, this is driven by our customers' needs and therefore we cater to their requirements. We also have a Stockholm Nord, which is an inland depot that basically we have train shuttles. I think you mentioned the video connected to 180 European terminals. So uh, we own the train shuttle service. We have five times a week daily car trains. 
briefly, we'll talk also about, uh, I said Stockholm Nord does have a lot of uh, savings in terms of time. It's 205 kilometers. If we go around about uh, from the south to the north, uh, which is where the other terminals are, for us it's just basically a run of 91 kilometers straight through and no traffic. Oslo, uh, probably zero emission target by 2030. It's probably the most quiet uh, silent terminal in, uh, in the world, basically. It's just right because it's some extremely uh, uh, lucrative properties and we have very, very strict uh, noise control uh, systems in place and are constantly being measured. On the other side, of course, we talked about the Black Sea. So we've talked now about our ports in the Baltic connecting to the dance to feed into the, the, the uh, land bridge. But we also have, as I mentioned, on the other end, uh, presence on the other end of the world. Oops. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a... Yeah, it's coming. You're coming? Right, okay. This is... Yeah. So what we have also, as I said, we have in Turkey, we have subflow terminals, but uh, we have a focus now in Gemport. Gemport is um, our new flagship terminal. We have um, just received four more Q QC cranes. These four, uh, they're being commissioned at this point in time. So this is a simulated picture. This should be ready for us in 2021. Natural depth of 70 meters. It's a thousand, uh, 1050 key line, straight line, linear key. Um, with uh, eight QCs, 23 across, 30 RTGs, um, six mobile harbor cranes, nine reach stackers, empty stackers, covered warehouse within an open warehouse and capacity for 2 million TUs. Uh, what is interesting for us here in, um, we, 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 obviously this is on the Marmara Sea. Uh, we control the pilotage as well, capable of having 24,000. So in, in leading up to what we want to build as a corridor, uh, between the two ends, between Poland and Ukraine, the Black Sea. As we know, we have restrictions currently in the Black Sea with uh, ship lengths at 299 meters. I think in the first slide, somebody mentioned 11,000 TU capacity vessels with it, at the max. Um, there's obviously the Istanbul Canal coming through, but uh, no one knows exactly what's going to happen. But obviously, for such a short canal, uh, the payback will be extremely uh, challenging and the prices will probably be very high. So as we know, in transportation, it's all about uh, cost and price and sensitivity and elasticity. So what can move will move. What's prepared to pay will pay. Right. So we still see our challenge here, our potential, at least in Gameport. I'm convinced that uh, with a larger... Uh, terminal, as I said, capable of having 24,000, we'll be able to provide the connectivity between uh, Asia, the Black Sea, and onto Ukraine and onto Gdansk in some aspects for some time sensitive cargo. And similarly, correspondingly, from Yavla into Gdansk, into Black Sea, and vice versa for. I think mean, we all established, I think, uh, I think we discussed this earlier on, I think there's only 2% uh, moving by um, rail at the moment, uh, by rail, and it's 1 million in the whole of year. And as I think, uh, I think common commented that Dominic moves that in three months. But essentially, so where do we see, as I said, Newport is positioned on either side to support this initiative. Um, we also, as I, I didn't mention this, but we also have another potential hub in Toronto, in Italy, which we took over. So all these ports, and I think uh, it both of us understand that Piraeus is pretty much congested at the moment, Malta. So there is potential for developing alternative hubs on both sides to feed into the corridor. Uh, with that, I thank you. Thank you, Ian, and thanks for uh, fighting your way through the technological difficulties. It's uh, never, never easy, but it's, <laughs> um, it's, yeah, and, and without standing on uh, Magnus's toes too much, I, I mean, I know having worked on um, projects in Yavla that it's uh, essentially a lot of, a lot of exports of uh, forestry goods. I mean, do you, do you see opportunities existing then for forestry goods to connect into uh, the Baltics and the Black Sea in, and connecting yes, to this certainly. corridor? Most certainly. I think that that's really when the, the challenge, the, the opportunities we are looking at with feeding 
uh, over the into the tanks and unfortunately at the moment some of it's going by the long route right uh, but i think there's there will always be the need for alternative routes and it's all boiled down to price sensitivity